New Horizons and myself. We are very happy that we have uh, quite a high number of participants here, a lot of interest. So let's start with the webinar on time. What I'm going to present this afternoon is, first of all, the uh, short introduction of uh, myself and ISPMA. Then I will give you an introduction for software product management and talk about some of the foundations of this role of product manager and the product management framework. We will then discuss in which area software product management is applicable. And at the end, I will give you some information on trainings that we are planning to provide. So let's start with a few words about myself. My name is Hans Bernd Kittlaus. I run my own consulting company, Innotivum Consulting. And my main focus area is software product management. I started in product management in the 1990s when I worked for IBM and I became responsible for product management of one of IBM's mainframe operating systems. Later on, I was responsible for the European product management of IBM's uh, database and application development products. At that time, there was absolutely no education, no books, no literature on the subject. So the only thing you could do was you could talk to people who already did this job and ask, ask them what they were doing. And that's what I did, and I got very different answers. So everybody had a definition of his or her own what they were doing in this, in this role. So that was a main motivation for me when I started my own consulting company in 2001 to focus on software product management. Since then, I've uh, published quite a lot of material, including two books. You can see the latest one here on the left side at the bottom of this chart called Software Product Management and Pricing. And I've done trainings and consulting for lots of companies and also public trainings. I'm a certified product manager myself, and I'm also certified as a Scrum product owner and a Prince2 practitioner. I'm a founding member and board member of ISPMA, the International Software Product Management Association, and that's an organization that I would like to tell you a little more about, because the results of this organization are the basis for the trainings that I'm giving. ISPMA is a group of people from industry and academia who started this association uh, about five years ago with the intention to establish software product management as a discipline of its own in both academia and the industry. As you may know, software product management is not something that is taught at universities, at least not at most of them, because the computer science departments think it's not technical enough, it's too much business, and the economic departments think it's too technical. So nobody really covers this. So that's one area when we want to change things. The second area is on the industry side, where 
we think software product management needs more common understanding, standardization, professional education, so that a larger number of people have the same understanding what software product management is about. So that's what we are trying to do in ISBMA. We build a body of knowledge uh, through syllabi that are the basis for trainings that can be given both by universities and also by, by uh, commercial training providers like uh, New Horizons and myself. On the next chart, you will see some of the people who are behind ISPMA. These are some of our fellow members. Uh, quite a lot of them from professors at universities in Europe and North America, but also quite a number of people from, uh, from the industry, from big companies like SAP or UBS in Switzerland, and also from uh, small consulting companies who have specialized on software product management. The curriculum that we are building uh, starts with the foundation level that you see here at the bottom of this chart. Uh, that's the training that I'm going to give in SOFIA at the end of March. On top of that, we are building so-called excellence level trainings for the different areas of software product management starting with product strategy and product planning and also going into strategic management and orchestration. So we are currently rolling out the syllabi and trainings on this excellence level. So once you have attended the foundation level and achieved a, a certificate on the foundation level, you can then continue your education on the excellence level. Currently, we uh, have more than 300 certified ISBMA product managers. Uh, we are, have been doing these trainings all over the world, and ISBMA has a nicely growing number of uh, members. So if once you have the certificate, you can also become a certified member. But ISBMA also offers a membership type called subscribing member. So when you go to ISBMA's website that you see on the bottom of this page, you can register as a subscribing member and make sure that you get frequent information about what is going on in the world of software product management. Well, let me say a few words about product management and the history of this. The first time product management was introduced was in 1931 by the U.S. company Procter & Gamble. They had two different soap products, and they decided that they put a product manager on each of these soap products with the objective that the product managers had to focus on the success of their respective product. So the idea was that these products are the assets of the company. That's what the company earns its money from. So managing these products over their life cycles makes a lot of sense from a business perspective. And that's what product management is about. So you want to manage and coordinate all relevant areas inside and outside of the company to achieve 
as much economic success for your product over its life cycle as possible. So when product management has already been known for more than 80 years, why do we focus on software product management? Why can't we just use what is already known about product management for other kinds of products? Well, the reason is that software products are different from most other products. And these differences in software products have a significant impact on what a software product manager does. So let me talk a little bit about the special characteristics of software products that have a direct influence on the work of the software product manager. So one characteristic is flexibility. We all know that software products can be changed and updated easily uh, all the time. And so the, the rate of change is very high. We do this with our software almost continuously, that we change it whenever there is a need for change. This is something that you do not do with most other products. When you have a soap product, well, you may change the packaging every five years, and maybe you change the fragrance of the soap every 10 years, but that's about it. You do not change the product itself very often. So that is something that has a direct influence on the product manager who needs to make decisions on all the changes that go into the product. Another area is complexity. Not only do we have these many changes, but at the same time, software is probably the most complex thing that mankind has produced. So this combination of complexity and high rate of change is a real challenge that software product managers are facing and that you do not find in the same way in other, other product areas. Of course, when you think of a power plant or you think of a car, there is a lot of complexity in those products as well. But most of that complexity is again in software. So in cars, there is lots of software. I read an article by McKinsey recently that said in a high-end car, there is seven times more software code in there than in a Boeing 787. So it's a lot of software that is used to, to implement all this complexity that, that is in cars, and it's the same with, with a product like a power plant. So even in those product areas, software is the thing that has the complexity inside. Another aspect that plays a role for product managers is stickiness. Stickiness means that, in particular for, for a B2B product, a product, a software product that you sell to companies, once the product is installed in that company and a lot of users use the software, then it becomes very difficult and costly for that company to replace the software. So probably that company will run the software for a long, longer period of time um, because changing would be too costly and too, uh, too work consuming. So that's a big advantage for established software product companies. At the same time, it's 
it makes the life of newcomers in a market more difficult. It is more difficult to replace an, an installed software product than it is to replace a soap product that uh, a consumer may use. So this also has a strong influence on what the software product manager does. Another area that is different is the simple copying. We all know that once a piece of software is developed, it is very easy to copy it and give it to a second or third customer. There is basically no significant production cost. You do not need to manufacture a piece of software like you manufacture a car. So these manufacturing costs do not play a role in software, uh, whereas in most other physical product areas, they play a significant role. So that means that once you have developed your software, any additional license that you sell is almost pure profit once you have uh, enough revenue that your initial development cost is contained. So that's the reason why successful software products can make people really rich. And when you look at the list of the richest people in the world, there are quite a number of software people on this list, like Bill Gates or Larry Ellison. So they have managed to develop and sell successful software products where they have a market leadership position. And then any additional license is pure profit. So having such a product is like printing money. You earn so much money that you can hardly spend it all. So that is also different to more traditional physical products. And again, this is, this is something that has a significant impact on the role of the software product manager. For example, in the, in the area of pricing, where the way you calculate a price for a software product is different from other physical product areas. Well, let's take a short look into the history of software. The term software was first used in 1958 by a British guy by the name of Tukey. At that time, software was not considered as something independent, as a product of its own. Software was an add-on a free add-on to computers. So the IT industry at that time saw itself as a hardware industry. They sold machines, computers, and software was given to customers for free simply because that's what they needed to run that hardware. Well, over time, this has significantly changed. As we all know, it is much more difficult today to really earn a lot of money with hardware, but the software has turned into a business of its own. That's partly due to technical developments. So in the 1960s, we saw higher level programming languages, compilers by which you could translate programs in a higher level language into machine code. Then came IBM's 360 processor series that promised to give customers the same API for quite a large family of processors and a broad performance range. So IBM promised their customers when they developed software against this API that this software would run without any changes on all the processors of the family. So that was another big step forward and made it more attractive to develop software uh, as a commercial product because it would run on a larger number of 
processes. But still, in the 1960s, the IBM gave this software away for free. They still sold primarily hardware. So other companies, since IBM became more and more dominant with the mainframe computers, other companies complained about this. And the U.S. Ministry of Justice uh, enforced that IBM had to separate software and hardware in 1969. So IBM promised that they would, from that point on, sell hardware and software separately and publish the interface completely between hardware and software so that other companies had a chance to sell software on IBM mainframes. You could say that this was the start of the software business as we know it today. And what a business that is. Look at these numbers. In 2013, it was about 300 billion US dollars in enterprise software alone. This does not include consumer software. And the market is still growing nicely. So it's still a very attractive market and it continues to be attractive for the foreseeable future. This is how ISPMA defines software product management. It means the management not only of software products, but also of software parts of other products, of systems and services that are software intensive. This discipline of software product management governs the software product over its whole life cycle. So from the start, when you develop the first version of that product, through the growth and maturity phases up to the end of life of the product. So through the whole life cycle, software product management needs to make sure that the biggest possible value to the business of the company is generated through that product. So from this definition, you can say see two things. One is the life cycle view. So we do not look just at one project or one release of a product. We really look at the whole life cycle. And that life cycle can be very long. Think of products like the Oracle database. That has been around for 35 years now, or even more than that. Let's think of the Windows operating system, also been around for more than 30 years. So these, for successful products, the life cycle can be very long. When, and the second thing that you can take away from this definition is the business focus. Software product management has a strong business focus. We try to manage the software product from that business perspective. So the software product manager needs to understand both the business side and the technical side. The objective of the role is this sustainable success, success over the life cycle of the software product. And we can measure that by different measures. Very common is profit or market penetration, market share. But you can also measure things like customer satisfaction. So that's what is often used to measure the success of a product and also of a product manager. We see software product management as a leadership role for all the aspects that concern the product. So we also call this a mini CEO. The CEO of a company is responsible for the business success of the company. The product manager is responsible for the business success of his or her product. And we say mini CEO because the difference to a real CEO is that the product manager 
typically does not have hierarchical management responsibilities. So you, as a product manager, you cannot tell people what, uh, and what to do. You have to convince them. You have to moderate them. So that's the difference between a CEO and a product manager. But in terms of responsibility, there are a lot of similarities. The job of a product manager can be a pretty hard one. There are lots of inputs that you get, requests, requirements. And as a product manager, you have to deal with all these players. And on this chart, you only see some of them. This is not complete. So if you want to be successful in this job, it's important that you prioritize your work all the time, that you focus on the important things, and that can change from day to day or week to week. So you have to make that prioritization decisions, not only for the requirements that you get for your product, but also for your own work so that you really focus on the important things. This is the software product management framework that ISPMA developed and that shows on one page all the activities that are related to software product management. So what you see here are seven columns. The columns product strategy and product planning, that is the core of software product management. So these two columns is what the product manager is directly responsible for. On the left side, you have the column strategic management. These are activities on a corporate level or business unit level that the product manager participates in. That's things like portfolio management, where the product manager represents his or her product, innovation management, and so on. The areas of market analysis and product analysis are also in this column because in bigger companies, these may be specialized teams on a corporate level. In smaller companies, this may be also under the responsibility of the product manager. That's why it's uh, with this gray color uh, that you see here. On the right side of this framework, you see the functional units of a software company, like development, marketing, sales, services. These functional units are responsible for the activities that you see in these columns, but it is the product manager's responsibility to orchestrate these activities so that all these functional units contribute to the success of the product in the best possible way. That is what we mean by orchestration. So in that sense, what you see here on this one chart is basically what the job of software product manager is about. And we use this framework as the structure of our curriculum and also of our foundation level training. So in the foundation level training, we go through all these columns in detail and discuss what is it that a software product manager is supposed, supposed to do in all these areas and also in the orchestration, on the orchestration side. That was the introduction part for software product management. If you have any questions regarding this, feel free to enter those questions in the uh, messenger on the lower left corner of your screen. And uh, I will either answer those questions right now or at the end of the presentation. I would like to continue now 
with uh, the question, where do you need software product management? Well, when you look at the framework, that is something that any software organization needs to do. Some of these organizations may not have the role of a software product manager. Then these tasks are given to different roles within the organization. But once an organization grows and gets a stronger product focus, things become much easier when there is a role of software product manager that takes care of all these activities. When you look at the, the software industry in North America, all the software companies have this role. It's, it's very well established. And it's the same with all the big software vendors all over the world. In Europe, this is not yet equally widely used. A lot of software companies in, U in Europe have the role of product manager as well, but not yet all of them. So that is something that uh, we plan to change through, through our work in ISPMA. Increasingly, we see software product management also in other industries. So not only in the software industry, but also, and you see that here on the next chart, also in industries that develop and sell software intensive products and services. Take the car industry. I'm involved in, with companies in the car industry that see that software plays a more and more important role for that industry. It's not, it's no longer only supporting the companies. It becomes part of the core of those cars. That's what what makes these cars work these days, the software contents. So they think about how they can improve their capabilities to manage that software for their cars. We also see a lot of interest in corporate IT organizations like banks, for example. Corporate IT organizations of banks are responsible for huge portfolios of of applications that run the bank. So they are also implementing software product management as a concept by which they can manage the applications over their life cycles. So they go a little bit away from a pure project orientation of the organization because they have realize that they need this life cycle view on their software. So that's why they go more and more into a software product management organization. And last but not least, we also see a lot of interest from companies who work on the service side. So who provide programming services or other types of software related services and want to change their business more towards a product business. So they want to transition from a service business to a product business or extend their service business by a product business. So what, what does that mean? Well, when you look at the dictionary, the term service has different meanings. So. It means useful labor, so that's what we know as professional services. That's humans providing the service. Then we know uh, we have service as a provision of maintenance and repair. We know that in software as software maintenance, so, so humans providing the service. And then it can be defined as the technical provision of a function or through a software component. 
And that's what we know as web services or software as a service in the software, in the software industry. So the first two here are really human services, and the last one is a technical service. And we need to separate these when we look at the spectrum of services in the software industry. And that's what I'm doing on this next chart here. So I see this as a continuum between services and product. So you can look at the service side here. There you have customer-specific services, like software development for individual customers, software maintenance for that individual customer, consulting services for individual customers. That's what we call customer-specific services. You may also provide services to, in a similar way to more than one customer. For example, you have reusable software components that you use in your service projects, or you are focused on computing and outsourcing where you have a standard process how you, how you do this. So that's what we call multi-customer services. On the product side, there is a pure product that is a licensed software product as it is. That is very rare that we see that in reality. What you usually see is a combination of the pure software with product-related services, like maintenance for that software product or training for that software product. Those are services that are directly related and combined with the software product. In the same category is software as a service or platform as a service. Again, even though the term service is in these, in these names, we consider these as software products. That is the software combined with services. And when we talk about cloud computing, the services include the, the hosting of the software. So that's one of the services. So that's how we define the product space on the right side and the, the service business space on the left side. Of course, the area in the middle between the two is not always black and white, but we think this, this picture is pretty helpful when you think of transitioning from a service business to a product business, and uh, we can help with that. So I hope that has uh, clarified a little bit what I mean by by service and product business. Uh, and for companies who are in this process, uh, the role of software product manager can be very helpful, not only for managing the emerging products, but also as a kind of change manager who helps in this process, in this transition process. Last but not least, I would like to give you some information on the trainings that we are providing. And as I said before, the structure of the SPM framework is what is behind our trainings. We have used this structure to structure our trainings. So the foundation level training is built according to this to this framework. So in the foundation level training, we will cover all the areas that you see in this framework. The excellence level trainings then focus on individual parts of the framework. So there will be an excellence level training on product strategy, one on product planning, one on strategic management, and one on orchestration. The foundation level training is a three-day training. It's based on 
ISBMA's foundation level syllabus that you can also find on ISBMA's website when you register on the website. Uh, there is a certificate for this foundation level. Um, you have to do a multiple choice test at the end of the training and if you are successful in the test, then you get the certificate as an ISBMA certified software product manager foundation level. This training is intended for people who have no experience in product management or are already in product management jobs with up to five years of experience. Um, in the trainings, we usually have a mix of people, but even the more experienced people always tell me that they benefit a lot from this training because of the structure that they, that they get based on the framework. So that structure helps people a lot to sort all the things that they are working on in a better way. But the training also works well for people who do not yet have a lot of experience in product management, but would like to go into those positions in the future. The excellence level trainings provide more advanced material and more practical exercises and case studies. Some of them are three days, some of them are only one day. And for each of these trainings, there are also syllabi. Uh, some of them are already available on ISBMA's website. Some are still under development. When you want to get certification, there is certification for each of these excellence level trainings. And the certification is based, again, on a multiple choice test plus some homework that we want the participants to do and that they send back to us and that is evaluated uh, later on. These trainings are targeted at product managers who already have the foundation level certificate or have comparable software product management experience of at least three years. So this is more for advanced uh, people. We will offer the foundation level training in Sofia and Bulgaria uh, in, at the end of March, March 23rd through 25th. Uh, it will be organized by New Horizons and you see the website here where you can get more information on the training and also register for the training. During the year 2015, we are going to roll out the excellence level trainings for product strategy, product planning, strategic management, and orchestration with certificates for each of them. So if you are interested in, in these excellence level trainings, check my website, innotivum.com, and you find uh, more information and also the dates of these trainings that are, have already been scheduled. So that's the information that I would like to share with you. Um, if you have questions, you can ask them now using the messenger function here on the lower left corner. Uh, you can also send me an email or uh, check my website, check ISBMA's website. I'm happy to get feedback and uh, answer any questions that you have. So anybody has a question right now? Okay, some people are typing, as I can see here. As I said, if you have questions later on, you can also send them via email. Okay, the question is the difference between Scrum product owner and uh, software product manager. 
Yes. Well, as I said in my presentation, product manager is as a permanent role in a software organization. So that role exists as long as the product is alive. The product owner role is a role in the Scrum team. So if your organization uses Scrum as the methodology on in your development activities, then according to the definition of Scrum, you have to have this product owner role. And the product owner is the person on the Scrum team who is responsible for requirements and writing user stories and making sure that the Scrum team has an ongoing flow of input on that they can work. So the product owner produces the user stories that the Scrum team then takes and develops the corresponding code. That's a role that is positioned as part of the Scrum team on the development side. And once the software is developed and the release is finished, the project goes away and this role also goes away. So if you are in an environment where you develop software in releases and versions, then you typically do that in a project organization. And the product owner role is part of that project organization. So it's a project role and not a lifecycle role. When you are in an environment that develops, for example, an internet platform where you do not work in projects, but you do continuous development, then the product owner role may be existing for a longer period of time. But still, it's a very operational role. The product owner has to deliver the, the input to the Scrum team on a continuous basis. So what we have found out is that you can use the product manager also as the product owner in a small environment when you only have one Scrum team then it can make sense that the product manager assumes the product owner role. But that does not scale up. So if you have two or three Scrum teams, one product manager cannot be product owner in all these Scrum teams. That is just too much work. If, that, if you organize that in this way, then the product manager will never be able to do all the strategic work on the product that he or she is supposed to work on. So that's why in, in larger environments, we recommend that you separate the product owner from the product manager, but you need to make sure that these people are tightly linked. So they need to be synchronized over time so that they do not work in different directions. I hope that answers the positioning question. Uh, so the next question that I see here is, I would like to ask how deep the business and software analysis knowledge of the SPM should be, and could the BA responsibilities be handled by the manager? Yes, um, we separate uh, requirements engineering on the product level and on the project level. So let me go back to the SPM framework here. When you look into the product planning column, you see product requirements engineering in that column. When you look into the development column, you see project requirements engineering there. That relates to what I just described about product manager and, and product owner. So the product owner would be in this project requirement space and the product manager in the product requirement space. But in both areas, you do requirements engineering. So 
business analysis skills are needed and very helpful in both areas. On the product level, you look at what is important for your product. So hopefully, if it's a successful product, you have a larger number of customers, and then you want to focus on requirements that benefit that, that uh, a lot of customers benefit from. So that's also a difference to doing customer-specific project work. Um, so that's part of this product requirements responsibility, that you select requirements that really add to the value that a lot of your customers get from your product. On the project level, you try to break the product requirements further down, get into the details so that the developers can fully understand what the requirement is about and how it's supposed to be implemented. So in both areas, uh, business analysis is uh, relevant. Thank you again for participating, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.